I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home, and God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me, and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life. He changes destiny. And he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. God can make you smart. God made me smart, and he can make you smart too. Here we are seeing Peter and John preaching the gospel in the middle of a huge crowd with no fear, no insecurities, no hindrances, no barriers, no chains, nothing. They are standing and they are proclaiming the gospel. And people who were listening to them are saying, wow, these men are unschooled. They didn't go to school of divinity. They didn't go to seminary. They, didn't have, they don't have masters in theological studies. They don't have anything. They don't have diplomas. But you know what? They have been with Jesus. And that's good enough. They were with Jesus. I remember all my life I was trying to prove myself to my father who told me that I was an idiot. You are stupid. I was getting good grades. I was stupid in his eyes. I started college at age 16. I was stupid back then. I graduated at age 19. Nothing could convince my dad that I was smart. And finally, after you hear the word so many times, as I always say, faith comes through hearing, hearing the word of God. But faith comes through hearing, period. Watch what you hear. Watch what you tell yourself. Watch what the enemy is telling you. What you are listening becomes a faith sooner or later in you. And I started believing to that voice that I was stupid. I was dumb. And you know, it didn't matter how many diplomas and how many schools that I went. I always felt stupid. And I have done some very dumb mistakes in my life. And at the end I said... I make stupid decisions. And how many of you know that you can be the smartest man or woman on the face of the world and you can still make the dumbest mistakes? And I was one of them. Then I came to Christ and I felt more dumb because everybody knew the word of God and they were quoting even during their prayers. Oh, people would pray with scriptures that I had no clue what they were talking about. And I was trying to read the English Bible, and because of my language was so poor, I didn't understand. I didn't understand the Bible. And one day, I wept, and I wept, and I wept before the Lord, and I said, I want to understand your word. I want to understand, I want to read it, and I want to get it. Because I was so hungry, I was like a sponge. I would go to church every day and would, could understand only one scripture or one sentence out of a half an hour or an hour sermon. Can you imagine? I could understand one thing, but I could take that thing to the heart. I remember first time I heard my pastor preach on do not be wise in your own eyes. I said, wow, do not be wise in your own eyes. What a big word. And I kept that, and I wrote it down. And I said, wow. And the next week he said, God says, my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. I wrote it down. And I didn't remember or understand anything else he preached. But it sounded so profound, so intelligent, so smart. 
And I started praying to God to give me understanding. I said, Lord, I want to understand your word. I want to understand. And one morning, I remember I was crying and crying to understand. I was suffering with the limitation of understanding. Then something happened that morning. Maybe I was in the Lord for six months or a year. I don't remember. But something happened. I started reading the Bible. And we never can understand everything. Because every time you read it, God reveals something else. But literally, I was reading and understanding. God gave me that morning understanding his word. Sufficient enough to feed myself. You know what a joy it was? God makes us smart. You know, when I was going to learn English, I was going to English courses. And in the classroom, I remember my English teacher said, she said, English is the richest language in the world. And th that was shocking. And then she said, if you finish high school, you can read this many words. I'm just saying what I remember, maybe three, th 4,000 words English you can understand. She said, when fin you finish college, it is about seven, 8,000. When you have your master's, it is about 10,000, but Bible is 15,000 words, new words. It's a PhD level. She didn't say that, but today I see that. God makes you smart. My husband, who doesn't have diplomas, who doesn't have a lot of education in the natural, but he knows the word of God so well when he speaks, I say, wow, this is godly wisdom and intellect. God can make us smart. It is amazing. I remember one day my team came to me and they said, this man is calling you from Turkey and he is desperate. He wants to talk with you. And there are so many Muslim people, they, through my live broadcast to Turkey, Iran, they call and they want to directly talk to me. And sometimes it is not possible because of the numbers of people that they want to talk with me. But this man was like a persistent widow. He was just keep knocking. I need to talk with Ishikabla. I need to talk with her. And finally I gave in and I said, what does he want to talk? And they said, he had dreams, and he wants to tell you about his dreams. And knowing Muslims are coming to Christ through dreams and visions, and a lot of people, they write to me their dreams, and they want interpretation. I said, here another one, because people write me four, five, six pages dreams and ask me the meaning of the dream, their dreams. But this man was so persistent. Finally, I called him. And when I called him, I was amazed because he never, he was not literate, he never read or write. He didn't know how to read or write. He had four dreams about Jesus. In his dreams, Jesus revealed himself to him as the Messiah, as the Son of God, Savior of the world. And after the dream, this man went on his knees in the middle of a desert in Turkey, in the middle of nowhere, he received Christ as his Lord and Savior. In the second dream that he had, he saw Jesus feeding 5,000 people. And other events that Jesus had done, he saw in his dreams. And by the fourth dream, this man knew the Bible. He knew the Word of God through revelation only. And he was speaking like an eloquent theologian on the phone with me. And I was just crying the entire time of my conversation with this man. He never went to school in his life. He had no school in the 50-mile radius where he was living, he said. But he was so smart on the phone that I felt like taking notes while this man was speaking. And he had one more dream that he had to share with me that he didn't understand the meaning. And it was about communion and water baptism. This is why he needed. 
And then at the end, you know, I told him about the communion and he took the communion on the phone with me. Another time I call, called him, he was ready. He was water baptized in his bathtub. And one day when I called him, he told me another dream. Jesus was taking a rope from his shoulders and he was putting his robe, his priestly garment on this man. And I told him, God is ordaining you. He is commissioning you to share the gospel with others. And he, this man was crying. I was crying on the phone. And after I hung up, God is using him mightily today. But I, after I hung up and I asked the Lord, Lord, I didn't lead this man to you that he called me. He doesn't have TV to watch my programs. He had to go to a big, another town, bigger town, to find a young kid to go to internet to find a Christian female preacher. This is how he find out about me. He never watched my programs. So he's not one of my viewers. Why? I mean, you reveal everything to this man. You made him smart. Why this man had to call me? He didn't need me. You could tell him about communion. You could tell him about everything without me. Why did you, you want him, this man to call me? Because he had a dream about me to find me. And Lord spoke to me. He said, I don't need you. The reason I made him call you was for, him, for you to know that I am working behind the scene and I am pouring my wisdom and my intellect and my word upon the Muslims. It was not for his sake that he called you. It was for your sake that you would be encouraged because you were asking me if you were fighting the fight by yourself. And he said to me, with me, you are majority. Because yes, I was asking God when I was going to Turkey, when I was in, in the middle of a country of 70, 80 million Muslims and seeing them bowing down to a false God every day, five times a day, I was asking, how is this going to happen? How are you going to change this? How is it going to happen? It looks impossible from my natural eyes. But God was telling me that he was working behind the scene. And it was not because of me and my efforts that had to save Turkey or Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan or Syria. But it was him working behind the scene, making people smart, pouring wisdom upon the people who are unschooled, have no resume. No good track record of corporations, IBM, Apple, Sony, or this and that. He was using them to build his kingdom. Because he's the God who uses the, choose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He's the God that who use and choose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So your intellect, your diplomas from the worldly perspective may mean a lot to you. But it means nothing to God. And he was telling me through this man, unschooled, illiterate. I make people smart. I take a fisherman that nobody pays attention his occupation is catching fish, nothing else. You don't need to be an engineer to catch a fish. You don't need to be a doctor to put a bait and catch a fish. You don't have to have a master's degree to catch a fish. It's a simple act. Probably anyone can do it. And I pick people like that fisherman and I turn them into fishers of men, and I make them smart, told me the Lord. First Corinthians 2.16, 
who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Another wonderful story. There was a man who was in a prison in Siberia. It used to be in Russia. He was in a prison in a very difficult conditions. It was a political criminal's prison in Siberia. So everybody in the prison except this man was smart. They were lawyers, writers, speakers, actors, all kinds of political criminals except this man. This poor man felt so stupid in the amongst of all these smart guys, intellectual guys. He would listen to them, but he, wouldn't, he couldn't understand anything. He would just do the worst work in that prison. He would take the trash out, clean the restrooms, or even they didn't even have restrooms, imagine. He would clean the dirt and the filth after this man that were so well educated, so smart. One day he was taking out something very, very disgusting in a can outside of the camp. He saw a one page paper, dirty, little, ugly, wet paper hanging on that can, sticked in that can. He picked up that paper and he dried. He could read hardly. After he finished his business, his assignment, he went inside the, the prison cell and he sat down on the floor and he tried to understand that page back and forth, front. And then he started reading it, he didn't understand. But he wanted to be smart, he wanted to understand. It. And it was a page from Book of John, one page back and forth. Not the entire Bible, not the New Testament, not even one chapter from Book of John. Only two pages. And he sat down, he read and read again and again and again. And something starts happening to him. Faith comes through hearing, hearing the word of God. Something started stirring in his heart. Because of that little piece of paper, what was written on that paper was so powerful that he invited Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He was an atheist before. He didn't know anything about God. And he started praying in his own way. He said, author of this paper, I want to know you. And God came and started living inside of that man. And you know, this story is written by a man that was one of his friends in that prison. And he said, after that day, that poor man became the smartest man in that prison. Just because Word of God, living Word of God was living inside of him. He was transformed and changed. He would sit down and talk about God for hours and explain things and mysteries to people in that prison who were doctors, philosophers, lawyers, judges, all sorts of high-level, high-rank political criminals. He could sit and debate with them and talk with them and lead them to Jesus Christ because God made him smart. This is what we need in the church today. We became smarter than God. We know what we are talking. We know how to run the church. We know how to do a worship service. We know how to do everything. Recently, I have an organization and I have a board of directors in my organization. We were putting the vision statement for my ministry together. And we hire a brilliant man 
highly educated. He put everything down about the vision, 50 pages, and something did not sit right within me. And I am coming from a secular corporate world. Something, and I started feeling the grief of God in my heart. He said, his whis he whispered gracefully and loving me. He said, are you gonna run this ministry? Like you ran, you ran a company? Are you going to run this like a business? Don't you need me here? Don't you need my intellect, my wisdom, my voice? Can you make this work without me? During the board meeting, I was in tears and I said, we cannot have this. We have to seek the Lord to put this down. We need to pray. Everybody on my board, they are Christians. They got offended when I said, we have to pray to put this. They got offended. Why is it so offensive to you? When I say that don't run the church like you run the business, why it is offensive to you? If you are not going to pray, why don't you go outside in the secular world and find a profession? Why you choose the church of God, house of prayer, to run it like a business? How dare you try to do that? This is why church is dying in America. This is why people are changing churches from one church to another, but not souls are getting saved and increasing in the church. If one church is increasing majority of the time, another church members are going to that church. Not we are seeing the lost get saved. What church is doing is right now, pointing their fingers at the lost and their lostness while we are ourselves are so lost in our ways apart from God. And sometimes I tell the Lord, did you bring me from Islam to see this? Did you bring me from false religion to see this? And Lord says, Every time I ask him and I complain to him, he says, if you don't like the game, change the game. If you don't like it, do something about it instead of complaining about it. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Daniel 2.47, the king said to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. For you were able to reveal this mystery when he interpreted his dream, king's dream. God's name is, I love to write down God's names. I have a big book only for me, printed out. My assistant put, in, put it together for me. I write God's names. He's the bread of life, living water. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, infinite God. He's the judge, builder of all things, architect, author and perfecter of my faith, all his names. And this scripture recently gave me a new name for God, revealer of mysteries. Genesis 18, then the Lord said, shall I hide this from Abraham, what I am about to do? One man is so close to God, walking with God so closely. He's called friend of God. And imagine God is saying, God of the universe, creator of all things are saying, am I going to hide this from Abraham? Wow, and he reveals what he's going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah, to Abraham. You know why? Because Abraham walked to walk with God. 
Paul said, kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. But power. When you have the wisdom of God, when you have divine wisdom, you have power. Today, church needs unction. Holy Spirit's power from the pulpit. Today, this is what we need, that the word, sharper than any double-edged sword, comes and cuts the hearts of people and brings transformation. Today, we need to turn from our worldly ways, our secularism, our new age teaching to God's ways. I remember when my former boss, who led me to Jesus Christ, was telling me about his testimony. He was a drug addict. His brain was so burned because of drugs. He was fired from 72 jobs because he, did, he had no work ethics, he had no discipline. He, he felt so stupid because of 19, 20 years, every day using drugs. But God made him smart. When he gave him his testimony, I look at a vice president of a multi-million dollar company who had a college degree and stu studying his MBA and becoming a CPA. A man, once his brain was so fried, he could not think, he couldn't separate from his right, from his left. And that man was sitting in front of me by the power of God who became smart, who became brilliant, and later on who led me to Jesus Christ. We changed my life. And I said to the Lord, Maybe today this is your prayer. Lord, I don't want to be street smart anymore. I don't want to be worldly smart anymore. I want to be godly smart. I need the mind of Christ. I need mind of the creator of the universe. This is what I need. Give me your mind. Give me your heart. Give me your brain. Give me your thoughts because my ways are pitiful and wretched, and my own wisdom is demonic. Bible says, I need your wisdom. I failed in my ways, and today, I wanna be godly smart. Make me smart like Peter and John. In Jesus' name, amen.